Welcome back in, Coat Lords fans. Mm. Here to do another movie review. What? Yes. And Dane, this movie that we are going to review today is the movie Megan. M3GAN? Yes. What did that stand for again? It was. I don't remember. Model 3 Generation Android. Oh. It, it was, I don't even remember that. The N was. I, I remember it, had it, uh, it was an acronym for something, but. Right. The fact that it you're. Model awesome. 3 Andro Generation Android. I can't remember what the N stood for. Mm, nanny. Na it I might be know. Nanny. I don't know. All right. Well, that's that's good. So, well, we like to thank you uh, in to watch this review. If you are stopping by for the first time or you're stopping by a multiple time but just have never subscribed, <laughs> go down and hit the subscription button. Come on, dudes. We need those subscriptions. Oh, we need those. We need those Please. Back. That's our lifeblood to keep doing this. And we need to get to 1,000. And it starts with you. And, um, you know, hey, 520. Three other people can't be wrong. We're going to have to have a telethon. Yes, yes. <laughs> we so, should have a telethon, yeah. live telethon. Call all of our friends. <laughs> hey, have you subscribed yet? <laughs> hey, well, we, we want a, your pledge that you will subscribe. <laughs> Let's put you up right now in our live yes. streaming. We should do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, make sure to do that. Hit uh, like, then tell us in the comments if you saw this movie. You know what your thoughts were. How would you rate this? Does it stand up to the Coat Lords ratings? We'll see. We yeah. will see. So plus, Dane, plus those who are watching us all the time, please hit the like button. We really need those likes. Yeah. We, we need to get the video up. It raises the video we up. Need we need to blow the roof off on the video. Always need to get to double digits. So if you're like watching us, please hit the likes. Yep. Yeah. All right. Go. So, Dane, uh, we always like to start off with a drink and what yes. are we drinking this week? Well, this one feel felt appropriate. Glen Glenowaf Rose Gin. Rose Gin. Not what you'd think two tough guys would be drinking, but right. it seemed appropriate for the movie for with Megan, because it's a killer. I tell you what, it's infused with roses. Yeah, you see Godzilla here has the little label on and it. And it, uh, you can definitely s smell the roses. So it's 41% alcohol. You can smell the roses, but they're infusing it when they made the, the, rose. the gin. They uh, ran it through like a giant bin of rose petals of different types of roses. Kind of like the way you get those like Turkish herbal teas and whatever. Yeah, so it's pretty little, tasty, but I think it needs more. I'm going to add a little citrus It adds to something, it. but you can drink it straight if you're a real big gin fan. But still, it needs a little bit more sweetness. I think it tastes more full with a little bit of citrus drink there. Yeah, it needs a sweetness added to it. I mean, it's very, mm -hmm. it's very floral and very juniper. But hey, you know. All right. I don't even know where it's made, but uh, Ireland. Is it Ireland? Oh, yeah. well, it says Irish gin. You're right. Yeah, it, oh, on the back. Stand, it, stand apart. Yeah. It's right here. It says. Uh, I can't read these small letters. It is. Imported by Mark Anthony. New Jersey! Practice spirits. <laughs> it's the Glendalo Distillery in Wicklow, Ireland. Oh. Product of Ireland. Is that Mark Anthony, formerly of the I, J Lo uh, uh, residence? I don't know. That would be I hilarious. No <laughs> All right, so enough about the drink. Let's talk about the movie. And before we talk about the movie, if you have not seen this yet, spoiler alerts! We are going into major spoiler alerts. Alerts. And yes. Be talking about every aspect of this movie. So that's right. If you don't want to know these spoilers, hit pause, go watch the movie, and then unpress pause. If Megan allows you to live, then you can come back <laughs> can and watch if, the review with us. If you right? could sleep at night with dolls in your room after yes. this movie, right? yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dane had to remove all of his dolls. I know, so man. I was a, like, blah. <laughs> So, My Chewbacca down. All right. <laughs> so we always like to start our reviews off with the Coat Lords ratings and tell you right up front what we thought of it, what we rated it, and then work our way back and how we got to that rating. But before we reveal the Coat Lords rating, let's see what the zeitgeist had to say 
Let's see what the Rotten Tomatoes scores oh, produce. Oh, those Rotten Tomatoes. So, Dane, you haven't... Spoiled Tomatoes. You haven't seen these Rotten Tomatoes scores, no. have you? As always. Okay. I do my best. Well, sometimes if you've seen them, I want to know. No, 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 I, I really, I avoid it. When I'm like, in the, I like do this, I'm like, I can barely see the button to say watch. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to right. see it. So, no, I have not. So, All right. I'm guessing, as guessing, usual. As usual. Uh, starting they, with the critics. What do the critics give this uh, I'm from give 1 to 100%? 73. 73%. And what do you think the audience gave this? 85. 85. 73 and 85. Yeah, 73 and 85. Well, Dane, would you be surprised if I told you the critics gave this a 93%? What? Yeah, I for sure thought they were going to go on the low and yeah. for some reason. Yeah, that they were going to nitpick on this. So one. now that you know what the critics thought, do you want to adjust your so audience? Was it, what was it for critics? Ninety three percent. Audience, actually, I think the audience is probably still eighty five. I think it went lower than the critics. So the the audience gave it a seventy eight percent. Yeah. So the audience didn't like it as much as the critics right. did. Right. So then I could see that. I mean, yeah. the, audi- the the critics were probably looking at it like you know seeing all the different other nuances and everything, and they're like, okay, they came up with a, you know, different angle on this. Mm-hmm. But that is pretty low. 78, well, you said? 93 and 78%. 78. So let's see what the Cult Lords ratings are. That's more important, I know. You know. It is. No. The executive producer's been waiting for f- four months since <laughs> this came out. To see what the cult like, lord please, does. for the <laughs> love of humanity, where's the cult lord ratings? Yes, I need. I'm waiting for my next production income. All right, so let's see what the cult lords think on the count of three. One, two, oh, three. Hey. Mm. What? Eight point one. <laughs> Oh Forgot God. the three rules. And Megan is Karen <laughs> with a three in the Karen name. Yeah, all right. Wow. We've never done this. We've never done that, have we? <laughs> no. We've gotten it on the... Oh. Oh. Man, that all got right. out again? Never done it where we're both on the no, same No, that's the first. Yeah. Never have done that. And, well, we're not two years yet, but a year and a half. Yeah. So 8.1. Cult Lords rating through and through. It's going to be an easy one to remember. <laughs> but that's interesting that you bring up Asimov's rules, right? That is exactly right. The three rules. And you know what? <laughs> With this chat AI coming out, and you know what I mean? I wonder, is there any rules being put into artificial intelligence to not hurt human beings? Probably not. Probably not. Because they're looking like, we got to let it be free. It's going right. to go out and learn. If you put restrictions on it, then suddenly it's going to be, it can't be as good as it can be, and I won't get my Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. I think governments around the world are going to have to get together and say, you got to well, put in or at least, rules. Or at least don't hook it to the internet. <laughs> I mean, don't hook it to the uh, electric grid. I don't know. Isn't that how, uh, Di- what was it, Di- the pre- uh, Terminator? I need to know how Skynet gets built. Who's responsible? The main most directly responsible is Miles Bennett Dyson. Who is that? He's the director of special projects at Cyberdyne Systems Corporation. Uh, all right. It's not a brave new world. It's a scary new world out there. And it's all, and irony is, is Megan came out, and yeah. then all the AI stuff came out shortly thereafter. Shortly? I mean, like, all this chat AI is been like taking the news the last four or five months right right and that's about the time that megan came out the the movie yeah. in the theater so it, it is interesting and, and it does make you think now um there hasn't been anything like a megan as far as the robotics are concerned no. But I think the AI is going to be created. That's only first. Yeah, that's only because no no uh, AI programmer knows how to do robotics yet. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, once you combine them, then all of a sudden it's like let's put the AI piece in there. I mean, and like so, are the are, are the uh, first robots going to look more like you know like Lost in Space kind of robot or? You know, like Twiggy from Starbucks. I mean, or the, from uh, Buck Rogers. The Japanese. I mean, have you seen like the kissing thing? No. There's a there's a kissing robot.
I will give exactly the kiss right. that you're giving. So it's supposed to be like... So the Japanese are all over this stuff. Unfortunately, it's also a lot of sex bots. Right. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's well, funny the that this, holds this one sure. went for the nanny bot versus yeah. the sex bot, but this could have been a whole other movie if it had gone the other direction. But it was interesting <laughs> because when you look at Allison Williams' character, which is yeah. Gemma, she created like in her college years like a a one point oh version. Yeah. And he was like a much more bulky kind of, you right. know, robot. You literally had to put your hands into gloves he was, and move Yeah, you were 100% controlling him. Right. He wasn't, no AI whatsoever. Right. But suddenly Megan, who has to be like five, six, seven, eight generations down the road, she's much more fluid and she can move like a human being. Now they, mm -hmm. they put on like a silicone mask to make her look more human, but you can still tell it's not human. It's very close. Right. It's human-like, but and, it's not human. And on that note, I think they did a good job of the special effects from, you saw, I, I mean, just, I don't know if you've noticed all these kind of things, but there was CGI, there was puppeteering, and then there was the actress. Right. I don't know if you watched, did you watch yeah. the special effects? No. I mean, the extras and all that? No. So they had all those three things going One on. at the same time. And so that was why sometimes they had these extremely human, like when she was like hands on the face, like right. oh, that thing, that was a, a person. That was right. a little girl. That was the girl. Right. When, and ironically, all the dancing and all the like, you know, stuff where she did that backflip in the hallway, that was an actual girl that did all of that. Right. That was an actual dance. So it's not CGI. It's, it's not CGI. It's practical effects of people. Right. You know, but then up. once in a while, you notice it was full CGI. Yeah. Like she'd be like walking in the hallway and then, and, and something looked off with the face. And then other times they used like a live puppet, like mm -hmm. a, a version of her. And then all of a sudden it looked real, but then it wasn't like moving 100%. Right. So they did a really good job of fooling the audience because they played it around. So like, what amazes me is their, I can't remember what their original toy is, uh, this company. It was like a, the, uh, it's it like was, a Teddy Ruxpin. It was kind of uh, a per, per something, per pack. <laughs> Perpetual pets are a dream come true Because now you have a friend that lives longer than you do Perpetual pets are just like real pets Except that when you talk to them, they actually talk back And I use balls Remember, thing, remember you... Teddy Ruxpin? Yeah that they And did. then there was another one where it was um, Furby Remember the Furby? Oh my god, I forgot my son has a Chewbacca Furby upstairs. Yeah. I forgot, I should have gotten it. Might have might have come to life. Well, he, he quickly put it up in his closet because you could not get that thing to shut up. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was cool for yeah. like about a week and then he was like, he won't stop talking. Yeah. So then he puts it up and it's kind of sad. Yeah. You know, if we're going to humanize robots, like this movie's all about that. Right. So, so, so they start with this thing. What, what amazed me is they go from this Furby to suddenly the CEO, who's, his name is David, he's played by the comedian Ronnie Chang yeah. from uh, The Daily Show. Right. He, uh, he suddenly sees Anna, or Anna, I said Anna, Megan, and he's like, what are you doing? That's not what I want. But wouldn't you look at that thing and say, well, what can that do? Because right. that's way more advanced than... When he goes down there and he's like, where's the thing I asked for? Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. He's like running the thing through. He's like, come on! Yeah. But I, I, his his character was totally over the top. I don't know. I think I think it you was... You think there's tech, admi tech guys? I bet you there's ridiculous. some Silicon Valley guys like that. Well, ironically, he's the one who... She forgot... Remember, she's... And so we're getting back to what my thing said, the three rules of Isaac Asimov. She said, I couldn't put your protocols in because I had a deadline to meet. And it was like, oh my God, you didn't think this thing could kill everybody? So t what are the three rules of Isaac uh, Asimov? Do you have it? This one is do not hurt humans. The second yep. one is robot must obey all orders except when they conflict with the first one is do no. And then the third yeah. one is protect your existence. Right. And unfortunately, this whoever uh, 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 the Allison character... Seem to have forgotten to put any of those in there. <laughs> well, but you know what? Like, we talk about these chat AI things and, you know, um, AI that's being created. Is anybody putting these rules in there? I don't think they are. Yeah. I don't think there's it. There's no mandate legally to put that in there. So, right. unless they want to put that in there. I mean, there was, there was a story that from a couple years ago, the Google team that was, you know, creating their AI 
had one of their AI um, like instances chat with another AI instance, and they started chatting back and forth, and then they they realized that they were being monitored by humans, so they started creating their own language so they could talk to each other, so the humans wow. couldn't understand what they were saying. Uh. And Google said, "Pull the plug on it right now." They turned it off. Oh, yeah. Wow. So That's scary. that is scary, right? <laughs> so, so like, I mean, Google pulled the plug on that that project, but you know, there's still AI right. going on right now. So, and on that note, I mean, you know, pulling the plug. I mean, she obviously had the whole thing with the neck and focus on this, and then, <gasps> and then obviously Megan figured it out near the you know later, but. They, they, like, they didn't have enough fail-safes built into this creature. Right. She's like, I got a remote control, but right. most of the time she's like, Megan, turn off. Right. Megan, turn off. So I think so. we should talk about what do we like about this movie because yeah. we both gave it 8.1, which is like a B-. minus. Yeah. Um, so we liked it, um, and what I liked about it was, you know, it was very thought-provoking. Yeah. It makes you think about, Okay, if we're just starting with chat AI right now, what does 10 years from now hold for us? Just yeah. 10 years from now. What does 20 years hold and, for and us? And the movie touched on somewhat of a zeitgeist moment in the sense that parents getting re having something else replace them. Right. I and mean, that was a big thing in this movie where it was like, well, Allison Williams' character was single, had to actually uh, uh, support her niece after the parents died. Right. And even though she blatantly never said, I don't want to do this, right. all her actions were like, I'm really busy. And right. this, is, this kid's really crimping my style here. Right. And she, so, tells, she tells Megan up front, like, one of your rules is you got to protect Katie at all costs. Right? Yeah. Like, that, that's who, and you got to come for her. Right. But it transferred the power from Allison... To Katie. Mm -hmm. Katie suddenly was the number one authority figure in the mind of Megan. And I think that she even said, right? right? Like, right. you are now the secondary or yeah. something like that? Yeah. Yes. Right. So, um, so it was interesting. It was, yeah. It was interesting to see the evolution of Megan continuing so, to learn. And so I thought, to your point about what did you like about this movie, I thought that was a very uh astute observation of the screenwriters that you know this is easily could happen i mean right. if you're not careful and this thing although they didn't really the thing that one thing big thing they glossed over in this movie was really was she that powerful i mean like they they like like strong like everything. super yeah. strong you weren't yeah. really sure because right. they never had her doing like i'm going to lift this car I mean, right. they kind of avoided all the heavy lifting but she definitely could take on people and kill them. I mean, that whole part where he's running down the hallway, what happens if he just picked up a printer and, like, smacked the crap out of her right there? Right. Instead, he just runs. Right. And so she's like, picks up the the uh, the paper cutter, and she's like, I'm going to kick you. You know? Right. You're dead, man. Although, why did she chase she him down? She killed the dog. She killed right. uh, she, they, Katie's little boyfriend. Although they never right? showed the dog getting killed, right. by the way. They yeah. weren't going to break that card. Yeah. She said something like smart, like, the dog is, is 35 miles west and buried five feet under or something like that, if you want to find him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was an interesting take on this whole thing. Right. Because she, uh, you know, they, they, they really looked at it like if there was, I mean, seriously, I mean, this is really on the cusp of this. You had a, a, a robot that can replace your parenting duties, I think a lot of well, parents and, would and be it was also, that. you know, remember they Pretend also bring grand? in they bring in the the psychologist to deal with the trauma, and then even the psychologist is looking at Katie like she's kind of taking my place as right. the psychologist, right? Because Katie responds to her and is not responding to me, you know, when we talk about right. these tra tragic things, right? Yeah. So suddenly, I think even the psychologist is realizing, hey, this. This toy is overstepping its boundaries, right? Right. And so, uh, you know, the, the the toy Megan is overstepping many boundaries: a, a parental boundary, uh, a psychological boundary, uh, but then uh, is a, overstepping a, a violence. A, a, yeah, I was about to say. Boundary. <laughs> yes. You know. So I mean, like, how did that that thing not get programmed? Like, don't hurt 
humans. Right. Uh, just as a basic thing, like, you cannot hurt humans. Right. I, they, they conveniently skipped that part. I mean, right. they made Alice, and this is one thing I'm going to complain about. I mean, Alison Williams, they kind of bring her in here, and she's like this slack, you know, I don't know what, slacker, kind of intelligent. It's like, how could you program the most basic thing into this? You knew you were like an 11 She didn't girl. have time. She didn't have time. I got yeah. a deadline, people. Like, that's that's why I kind of had a problem. Yeah. With certain parts of this. Yeah. But you know what? I like I talked about like government agencies around the world are going to have to come together like a yeah. consortium, and they're going to well, as this develops, they're going to have to come up with these rules, right? But even if governments come up with these rules, do you think militaries would follow? Well, I, w- I was actually you you beat my thought was exactly that. That's what's going to end up happening is is that the you're right the governments will generally say no right. and then all of a sudden the, some and it's going to be a rogue military yeah is going to come out and say oh, well it I could be just, the United States military yeah but I, I mean, no it could easily be, be the United States well I'm saying well I know if but you're I saying mean, you 100 percent trust the United States military then, but that's but that means you know with drones they don't yeah. they're not they're still controlled by humans. That's that's because of now. I mean, we're talking war games at this point. Yeah, look that up, people. Yeah. Matthew Broderick and Ali Sheedy. Well, there's so many influences to yeah. this movie too. Right, I, 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 and, I, and they ignore them all. That's well, the thing. She's like never seen war games. Right, <laughs> she's never seen war games. She never saw uh, what was the one with Will Smith, I Robot, which is an yeah. Isaac Asimov I know. movie. Then there's AI with Steven Spielberg. You exactly. Know I mean? You know that, like, you know the little boy. Uh, that was supposed uh, to be in there. Osman. Yeah, Haley Osman. He's supposed to be a little good AI, but when he goes out into the real world, he sees that there's all kinds of different AI machines out there, some providing pleasure, some you know, some right. nefarious, you know what I mean? The one played by Jude Law, he couldn't 100% trust, you know what I mean? Right. So yeah, I mean, that movie really addressed the whole, Yeah. you know, these are the rules. Right. Let's find all the loopholes in the rules. This one avoided everything by, like, there's no rules. Yeah. She's just going to get pissed. Yeah. So. But in the end, it does make you think. It does make you wonder. Yeah. You know, what's going on and. Uh, are we this close? I mean, we're very close. Yeah. <laughs> then, of course, you know, we this saw that definitely... dance scene in the trailers. Uh, so I was waiting for that and. You know, it was pretty funny, so... And you know, there was a couple it, it, it isn't amazing that that was a real girl that did that. Oh, I can imagine it'd have to be a real girl. I mean, that, yeah. I mean because it was so, like, weirdly, like, mm-hmm. rubberish or whatever, that they couldn't even CGI that. I mean, they had to have her do that. And the amazing thing, she did well, that, Well, have like, you ever seen the ragdoll uh, CGI kind of thing, the ragdoll program? Well, wasn't that, like, fake? No. Oh, that was a real girl? Yeah, well, no, it's just, like... You throw a rag doll out and it falls and it hits and it just shows how the motion would be of oh. this, right? And so you can program something like that, but it wouldn't look as good as really in this okay. case. They found an actress, the little she—I don't know what her name was, but she's in here probably. It says it, but so Amy Donald played yes, Megan exactly. Amy Jenna Davis she played could, the voice. She could do all of those. Not yeah. everything, but I mean, those, when when it looked blatantly 100% human with touching and... Ru- oh, is it like the scene in the woods? Yeah. That was her. Running, she running, really did that on her fours. Running like a wolf. She, yeah. They were like, we were amazed that she could do that. Yeah. She like chased after him. Now, of course, they probably sped that up a little bit to make it keep up with that little kid. And man, did he have it coming. Yeah. But um, the... Uh, but yeah, so they, they, they did a great job, I will say, of Ming intermingling the CGI, the real woman, and then the puppeteering, the puppeteering because yeah. you knew it once in a while, but then other times you're like, God, that looks so real. Yeah. She's like touching things or the yeah. dancing or... Oh, well, and, and by the way, did you watch the unrated version? Or so no, both? I whenever I have the opportunity to watch uh, unrated or, not, uh, or the regular movie version, I always watch the movie version first. If uh, I like it, then I will because I want to see what all of the audience. Oh, uh, I want I go the other way. I want to see this. I want to see what they wouldn't show to the right. audience. But then, but then I like when you talk to people and you're like, remember that scene? And they're like, no, I didn't see that. You know what I mean? And so then I always watch what the audience at the movie. What if I paid my money to see it at the theater? What do mm. they see? 
And then if I like the movie, then mm -hmm. I'll go back and watch the unrated version. We have two different opinions yeah. on this one. So did you not watch the unrated? No. Okay, so I watched them both. Well, I didn't watch it fully. I watched the unrated, and then I went back and watched the first one. And I, I, well, and so I, what was in there? Well, so what I did, I knew there was not going to be big differences. I figured it's going to be the violence. Right. So you should watch it because in the unrated version when he's running down the hallway and then she gets him in the elevator that thing goes all the way through his body comes out the, the this and then blows blood all over the place uh. they completely skip that the other thing was um when the woman's getting sprayed when she's killing yeah. her in the thing her face like starts peeling off and all this like all you know, right. stuff comes out and then there was one there was I only look for the violent scenes because I assume that's what it was. It was going to be the violence. Gotcha. Well, um, that's interesting. So maybe yeah. I'll check that out. I want to know what the Cult Lords fans yeah. think, though, about this movie. Did you see this in the theater? Or have you seen it now that it's on streaming, Blu-ray, digital? Did you watch the unrated version or the rated version? I'd like to hear what you have to think. Uh, so go down and hit subscribe, like, Remember, need double-digit likes, and then tell us in the comments what did you think of Megan? Is she a Karen like I think? So uh, I don't know. Did you uh, did you did you like this movie? Did you not like this movie? If you didn't like this movie and you have a lower rating than what we have, tell us why. Tell us what what did not intrigue you about this. Mm. So. All right, and you know what? Maybe we'll get some uh, AI visitors. I do have one more comment. I think the soundtrack was a mistake. They tried to be too Matrix-like. Do you remember uh, with all like the heavy, like, wah, yeah. wah, wah. I'm like, what has this got to do with like a young girl? All but right. Go ahead. No. Nope. Very interesting. So. Yeah. All right, Dane. Well, to get us out of here. I am Bruce. You're going to be killed. Bacon, bacon. Ah, peace out. <laughs>